is Andrew with GY6 Vids, and today we're testing body armor. The gear we're testing today is all from armorware.com. They make some of the highest quality plate carriers I've seen yet. So you can see on my left right here, we got old Ballistics Bob, and he's rocking one of Armor Wear's Marine Corps Force Recon Elite Plate Carriers. It's got a cummerbund that is comfortable and it fits well, it's snug, which I'm about to show you here in a second. And then over here on my right, we have the same plate carrier minus the cummerbund. And I wanna walk through some of the steps explaining not only the body armor that we're gonna be testing, but also the plate carriers and how they function and why they're such high quality. The Marine Corps Force Recon Elite Plate Carrier by Armorware.com is second to none. You're also getting made in America. It's not some cheap knockoff from another country that claims to be the best. It's not. This one is the exact plate carrier used by our United States Marine Corps, uh, which I am very honored to be able to test this equipment and also be able to have it on my show. First and foremost, when I see this vest compared to other plate carriers I've seen, is the stitching and the quality of the materials being used. The biggest benefit I've also noticed though is the quick detach cummerbund system. So you have a pull cord here, you pull this and the cable that runs all the way through this in the back that holds the cummerbund onto the plate carrier and makes it look like this once you detach it. So you can drop your cummerbund system off of the whole rig and get rid of weight like that if you want to. Okay, so now we're on the back side of Ballistics Bob, we're gonna show you that cummerbund system, the quick detach with that cable. You reach underneath, you have your strap, you pull that up, and you are in full view of the cummerbund system, the quick detach system that Armor Wear provides. You just pull on the handle, which is right there. Once you pull on that handle, that core gets pulled through all the way up to the back side of this, the cummerbund breaks free, you just gotta worry about the hook and loop in the front, and you'll be good to go. Push that underneath, and you are back in action with Ballistics Bob. Come here, Ballistics Bob. Ah. You can see that we have panels that you obviously reach underneath, you just pull up, and pull up like that. Now this is lifting the main strap covering your stomach. You now have your cummerbund straps that you can pull off, left, and right, and then inside, Right at the base, you have an opening that you can put soft body armor that armorware.com sells as well. This is the level 3A soft body armor. This can go underneath behind the ceramic plates or steel body armor, whichever you want to use. This will go behind it and allows for an in conjunction setup. But we're not doing that today, we're just doing standalone plates. And then it just seals right back up and you're good to go. Cummerbund wraps around, this wraps down and under and you're back up, rah, ready to rock and roll that fast. Time to shoot some rounds through this body armor and uh, see what happens when we put some armor piercing rounds through these things. Okay, so Ballistics Bob here is gonna have to get a wardrobe change because I don't wanna mess up my Elite Plate Carrier. I like it too much. So, ready? Ballistics Bob, looking good. All right, so Bob here is a little bit more front heavy now. We don't have the back plates on him, so a little piece of metal holding them up. We'll have something in there the entire video. But let me explain a little bit more about what this perforation test is gonna do. We have the level three plus plate in right now and then we're gonna follow up the level four plate. Now in this test, we're looking for perforation. Perforation is complete penetration or penetration of the plate. Now, according to NIJ standards, full penetration or perforation of a plate is when any fragment of that round passes through the plate and into its intended target. That's a fail in their book. So we are trying to stop everything and keep it all on the plate. Now, back face signature is the blunt force trauma on the back side of the plate, which is the bubbling effect on the back side of the plate. And that's what we're gonna be testing tomorrow's video. Stay tuned to that, it's gonna be very interesting because that's what I'm really interested in doing. This is almost certain in my book to stop the bare minimum of what they want in the NIJ standards. But of course, we're gonna push it to its ballistics limit and see how many shots it can take before it fails. So, what we're gonna do, shoot at it, According to the standards, we're gonna do 556 green tip, so it's a ballistics tip, which has a harder metal in the insides of the round, which are meant for armor piercing. Most of the time, level three plates aren't meant for armor piercing rounds. They're meant for standard 308 rounds. 147 grain, I think they're looking at about roughly 2,700 feet per second on average, and you take six shots of the plate. We're gonna take six shots of the 556 armor piercing rounds, see what happens. Is that round's moving at, on average, when I calculated so far on the chronograph, 
is 2,800 feet per second on average. So we'll shoot this six times with a 5.56. If it still holds up after six shots, I'm gonna keep firing away probably rip off at least maybe another 10 rounds of 556 we'll see what happens because i want to keep seeing what's happening to the plate and see if old bob here will survive so that's the idea of the perforation test we're going to do the same thing with the level four plate we'll put inside we'll do the same test but we're going to do it with 30-06 armor piercing rounds so it's the black tip 30-06 rounds and that allows it for ripping right through armor plates most of the time but level four by nij standards is meant to stop one of those rounds dead center with good shot placement and it's supposed to stop it now i don't really know a lot about the back face signature of a lot of plates because most people don't do them and that's why we're doing the test for tomorrow for the back face signature because everyone goes oh it stopped it must be a great plate but if it's bulging out this far on the back side that's going to go into your chest that blunt force trauma can stop your heart like that that's what the test tomorrow is for in the clay. I'm not sure how it's going to handle with a couple of these armor piercing rounds. If you're getting shot with a 30 out 6 armor piercing round and you're not like, <laughs> you just, <laughs> you deserve to die. <laughs> That's just in my standards, I guess. <sighs> We're using a 5.56 AR-15 and the Ruger American 30 out 6. Yeah, that's right, because I don't always have to have high-end crap. <laughs> All right, enough talking. You guys get the idea. If you don't understand some of this crap, leave a comment, and I'll explain more of the NIJ standards for ballistics testing. All right, enough talking. Let's get to shooting. Five, five, six, 62 grain, 2,800 feet per second, armor piercing. Wow. I think Ballistics Bob's just like, eh, whatever, bring it. Let's go take a peek. Direct hit, right center of the plate. I'm looking on the back side. Ooh. I feel a little back face signature, but definitely no perforation. The mesh in the back of the holder is not even busted, so no perforation. Shot one. Let's rip off about, well, it requires six, so five more, and we'll see what happens. The first one was dead center. I'm going to try to go a little bit above that, about probably four inches, and then I'm going to go to the left and then the right, and then dead center, uh, and then put another one somewhere else. So try not to do bullet on bullet. Give it that fair shot placement with the shot to shot ratio and stay two inches apart. All right. Don't fall, Bob. Don't fall, Bob. Don't fall, Bob. All right. All right. So, uh, looks like we have a little closer than two inches. Uh, we got shot placement within, you know, two inch around and then one at the top. This one's a little bit close, so let's feel in the back and see. Hang on, Bob. It's only hurt for a second. Ah. Uh, Nope, no ripping, no fragmentation at all. Cool. So uh, it is stopping and the back face signature 
Not a lot. We'll see what it looks like in the clay for tomorrow's video, but yeah, level three plus, doing good. I'm gonna do 130 six round, bam, right in the middle. Try to get it between these shots. I'm gonna try to go right there. Offhand, we'll see how it happens, but we'll try. But 30 six armor piercing, and if that stops it, I'll be very impressed because these level three plus plates are not meant to stop even one round of 30 six, 180 grain, or any 30 six with armor piercing. So let's see what happens. 30 six first. If it doesn't go through, I'm gonna quickly come over and feel, and then I'm gonna come back for five, five, six, and just ba 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 ba, and then we'll give this one the seal of approval. Right now, it's already passing NIJ standards, so this is good to go. Um, no perforation at all. It's completely being stopped, and the back face signature is fantastic. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Thirty out six time. <sighs> Thirty out six. Armor piercing. See how it handles on this. He didn't wiggle a lot, which is usually a sign of a round just doing what it wants to do. So let's go see if that is true. This isn't ideal. <laughs> I kind of guessed it back there. Due to the fact Bob only wiggled about that much, it kind of told me the round went straight through and blew right through. I can see it ripping into the gel, hitting dead center in the plate. I believe the hole I hit, ooh, that might have been. Yeah, it was like right in the middle of the rest of them. So I can feel it blown through on the backside, right in the middle. So the follow-up shots of the five, five, sixes, I'm gonna hit up here and still if see if they're still stopped, which would be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, but 30 out six, straight through, not good. So we have about, I think seven or eight rounds left in here. Maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little bit left, give or take, but I'm gonna put them all on the top, right above where the perforated area went and see if it stops bullet on bullet impact of armor piercing 556. Five, Hang on, Bob. Uh oh. Bob's down. Coming, Bob. Man down, Bob. Man down. All right, fix Bob. Now time to mess him back up. Okay, clearly Ballistics Bob didn't have a really good time with the follow-up shots of about 10 armored piercing, or probably, t yeah, about over 10, 12, something like that, I can't remember, of armored piercing 5.56 five, on top of the ceramic plate breaking with the armored piercing 30-06 round. Put the level four plate in this, put some duct tape over the original holes, I'm gonna see more impacts on this clearer, I believe, than I would on black. I'm gonna try to keep the shot shot placement of two inch spread um, I don't want to be too far away because then you have shot to edge, which is two to three inches from shot to edge. So you can imagine that. So I want to stay within this nice six inch circle in the middle. That's the ideal situation for NIJ standards. Let's get into it. Strap Bob up with the level four plate, stand him back up and uh, get the cameras rolling. See what this does. All right, so we got the 30-06 round. We're gonna send it on down to the plate. I mean, right in the middle, right underneath the armor wear symbol at the top of the duct tape. See how this looks. That seemed to have stopped it. All right, so as you can see, the impact of the 30-06 armor piercing round exploded out of this thing. I mean, we have chunks of the ceramic everywhere, not to mention 
little tiny pieces of the projectile itself. I mean, this is the tip of the round. Um, this is that armor piercing core that you're gonna get out of this 30-06 armor piercing round. And it obviously just rah, stopped, done, exploded. So that tells me there's probably no perforation on the back side. But I do wanna see the back face signature, a sneak peek of kind of what it looks like in the clay for tomorrow. But after this, I just wanna see what the back looks like. And then we're gonna follow up with about three or four more. I'm probably thinking about two. I think two more on here. We'll see how it looks. Um, and then we'll finish up with tomorrow's video, seeing what this looks like in the clay. And it's one thing to stop the round, like I said, but it's another thing to have back face signature on your person. And if it cracks your sternum and ribs, that would be bad. So I, I got to pop this off. Let's take a peek. By NIJ standards, this vest passes. Now let's see if it passes the GY6 standards with a couple more rounds of these armor piercing 30 out six bullets. Let's take a peek. All right, that's one. Let's go for bottom left. All right, that is three shots of armor piercing rounds within a good radius. If it stopped these, I'm gonna be very impressed. That's just insane. The first one was a huge explosion. I was kind of doubtful that the second and third would be stopped. And I still haven't checked yet, so let's see. Let's pop this thing off real fast and uh, get a peek. All right, let's pull this out. Cool. Get over there. So, uh, I'm gonna get a close up here so you can see it. Around the jacket, you can see the core of the round right in the middle, and it's embedded inside the ceramic plate. That is just too cool. But on the back side, that's too crazy. It's very little back face signature, but you gotta imagine though, this is right up against your chest, and <sighs> I mean, I can feel those bumps. So tomorrow's video with back, back face signature in the clay, we're gonna see how much that leaves a impact on your chest. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video for the follow-up of this, a part two with doing back face signatures on the back of uh, the plates into clay. So it's gonna look pretty entertaining and we're gonna shoot the hell out of them again and see what happens from there. Make sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, tell your friends about GY6 vids and we will see you tomorrow. That's copyright. Shut up, cow! <laughs> well, it's probably. Don't worry. There were holes in front of it already. <laughs> Another. Go away, cow! Beef. It's what's for dinner. None of that chicken stuff. Why is this gun so sticky? I swear to God, it was grapefruit juice. Andrew with GY6 Vids, and today we have a armor plating testing facility with a firearm, with a, with a gun, and the pew pew, pew 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 That, ladies and gentlemen, is how testing is done in America. <laughs>